Well, hello, folks. Welcome back to more Nanyang Championship action here for the NA Qualifier. We have finally made our way to the lower bracket final. We just witnessed earlier today Fire Gaming Best Root Dota 2-0, and that means now they have the tough task of facing Digital Chaos in the lower bracket final. I'm Kyle Guy from Beyond the Summit. That's Gods. David, are you ready? This is hype. I'm I'm looking forward to this series. Especially, I mean, everyone kind of talked about leading up to the DC versus Cloud9 series. Who's the second best team in NA? Well, everyone's kind of look, looked fire and just put them to the side. They're like, oh, they got 2 0 by Payne in their opening series. They but they're suddenly in the top three. Payne nowhere to be seen. They have turned things around and are playing much better Dota since we last saw them. And I'm looking forward to see what they can concoct Dota here against DC. Back. Yeah, this could be that bit of a potential gap. We, we all seem to recognize that Team DC and Cloud9 are at that level just behind EG. Now, is there an additional level gap between those two teams and a team Ten like Fire Dota? Win. Maybe they just had that bit of a sour start, like you said, against Pain, and now they're on the comeback. This will be the ultimate test for Radiant that here. Team. Fire Dota, formerly what was Root, a very resilient group. We know that already from players like Moo and Fluff, like... With their team at the Red Bull uh, land, they battled their way from open qualifier, almost making it to the land itself, but they did get bested at the end from uh, Champions of Summer's me. Rift. But here they go. And no surprise, there's going to be a lot of value in heroes like Bounty Hunter and Naga between these two teams. They love to pull out those crafty little cheeky Reserve supports. Time. Yeah, and I think it was actually, yeah, Fire in the last series banning Naga pretty much all the games, so not going to see that here at all. Fire first pick Tusk. They've been doing this all day long as well, so no surprises there. And Digital Chaos, Lena Shaker response. We've seen Yuwa play games of Lena here and there, and Earthshaker has been a go-to hero for Biryu. Him and SVG, like the roaming supports, have just been playing Earthshaker all tournament long. So definitely some similarity Ten between DC and, and C9. But mm -hmm. I'd say Fire have been, for the most part, doing their own thing. It hasn't been any kind of Five set formula remaining. as far as like following the metagame. This first to pick Rubik comes out again, and that's a very Fire Dota-esque way to open the draft. Certainly so, and obviously Digital Chaos recognize that Fire have pulled out techies in the past. Whitebeard has used this hero many a time, especially in tandem with the Tusk, so they don't want to risk that here. It's interesting, Fire put a lot on Bulba for their second uh, phase of bands, but it's going to be the Darkseer and then the Brood follow-up. Uh, normally I'd find maybe Bulba's clockwork most threatening, unless he is able to creep in yeah. a Broodmother at an opportune time. Uh, his Darkseer was, was pretty good in their last series, but there were a couple of hiccups here and there. So I just overall find his clockwork way more threatening, but I guess just for the team composition that Fire are potentially throwing together, they don't want to deal with the Darkseer. Yeah. I, they preemptively already picked the Rubik, so it's like, well, we've got one of the heroes that can deal with the clockwork, and the kind of heroes that Joe's been playing, like, we've seen them beat clockwork lane the rubik jug has no issues at all with the clock so that's the kind of pick we could be seeing come out from jero pl is still available though so maybe they kind of prefer the pl when it's there and we'll have to wait and see seconds. well roland came by earlier was fiending on some of the stats between these two teams five and uh, he let me know jo is currently five and oh on that juggernaut Dyer this patch so okay but it's gonna be an am picked up here for fire so gives a bit an idea as far as why they decided to ban out that dark seer and now it could be a bit uneasy if Digital Chaos did, for some reason or whatever, wanted to consider something like a Storm or any sort of big mana-dependent hero. They already do have a couple, though. Uh, a Alina getting caught out of position with low mana. Even an Earthshaker after committing like his big combo, let's say, could be walking time bombs for this AM. Yeah, let's see if DC can really even put anything together. If they want to. I, I don't really see an easy way for them to pressure the AM in lane. I think the response to this is maybe just taking a like, PL, time. potentially. Um, DC maybe wanted Antimage themselves because TC, I think, played it earlier today in their best of three. Um, that DC, oh, was that DC playing? Yeah, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure TC's played. No, he played it yesterday against C9, and that, that was what I'm thinking of. And uh, Yeah, they traded each. Ritsu started off the yeah. first game with his AM. Very impressive. TC's like, I can respond with an AM myself. Didn't work out so well for him, yep. but... Had great farm nonetheless, good build up, even took a few things from Ritsu on how he decided to build up with that whole early to headdress, uh, building eventually into the Vlads at the start. So we'll see here though what DC want to do to respond, and it is going to be the Owie Skywrath Mage. So that is going to be a core Earthshaker for Bulba. We don't get to see Bulba play the Earthshaker too often, and that means Biru is going to be playing the Dazzle instead. 
but this is one of those aggressive supports Curtis loves to pull out. Even back in the EG days, he would play it a lot. And he would play aggressive, always be smoke. Like he'll look for that kind of 10 to 15 minute smoke ganks with the Lena, where you kind of you go around the time Lena gets a Yule Scepter, your Skyrath kind of heads off as well, and you look to use the uh, Ancient Seal to buff up Lena's damage as well as prevent someone like Antimage escaping. But Fire Dota, they pull out the Undying. They're going to have a very strong laning stage here. Tusk Undying in the off lane. Ruby came in the safe lane. They're going to hold on to their mid pick for now. Much like DC holding onto their safe lane, just kind of trying to wait for the very last minute to reveal your last core hero, the last piece of the puzzle. And time. For fire, it's all about the lane stage. It's what got them past Root Gaming in the previous match, and they're going to look to continue some of that here. Yeah, Digital to Chaos, they do have a lot of range already to help deal with the Tombstone, but for some of them, they could be pretty frail. You don't want to have to commit too hard to get a Tombstone. Next thing you know, you're up to your chin with zombies and you have not much left with your already very yeah. fragile Skyrath mage starting with little to no armor as it is remaining. so we'll have to see but they, I love the combo that they have you know Earthshaker sets up long range fissure easy mystic flare Radiant you see how we pull out tricks like that all the time so I'm sure it's something they're going to be looking forward to here but yeah assertive lane dominance already coming up from the draft side of fire they're going to ban out that PL you were talking about before this limits a couple options here for TC and what's he what he wants to do outside of the options that have already been taken away he has pulled out a razor in the past I believe any mm -hmm. thoughts about maybe a razor here sounds decent like you've got at least to hear that can static link either the melee tusk or the undying um, if you can get some decent damage you can bring down the tomb in decent time so I think getting a range here against Ten tusk undying is remaining. very important and Razor decent, Viper Five possibly something you'd consider, but again, you need catch for anti mage, and there's catch for oh, anti mage. Yes, of course, Bloodseeker, one of the kind of classic AM counters right now, and pretty good in lane with, with the aggressive support duo with a Sky and Dazzle. This just makes the Bloodseeker that much better in lane against the Undying Tusk. Yeah, well, what do they get on the side of Fire Dota to respond mm. to this? Their 747 hero that can deal with a Bloodseeker. I TA perhaps? I mean, you are kind of melee heavy with Undying Tusk and TA, but TA is pretty remain. good at dealing up and close and personal with a Bloodseeker Zeus. later on, but... Oh my! Zeus Haven't seen him out. in quite a while. Little yeah. Zeus being pulled out ah. here. Not a bad idea. I mean, it gives you that little extra firepower anywhere on the map once you hit level 6, so you can help out the Tusk Undying, help out a Rubik Anti-Mage. And this is a great Anti-Mage game because... Offline Earthshaker has no tools whatsoever at really fighting the Antimage in lane, and I don't really think DC can dual lane to try and pressure the AM Rubik. I think AM Rubik can deal with Earthshaker plus either of these two supports pretty well. So we'll have to see if DC just go for a, a standard tri lane in the safe lane, maybe roam the Skyrath a little bit, but we've seen Biryu mostly playing those roaming heroes, but this time around he's going to be on a classic kind of dazzle, which is a bit more of like a passive laning support in some ways i'm also curious to see the uh just the zeus lena matchup lena the, the new too hot to trot mid laner that has justifiably been able to be that first pickup here and especially in the hands of players like you are i'm curious of how 747 is going to be able to deal with the strong mid game of what lena has he has certainly a, a wealth of burst behind him uh, but I don't know if the support staff is going to be able to really assist him because I imagine a potential dual lane is going to be coming from the side of fire. Leaves their options a bit dry because I'm sure the Rubik is going to want to be hand in hand then with the AM on the bottom lane. So this Zeus mm. could be in a bit of trouble if pressure does come around. Yeah. If it does. And that's where I think one of the supports, we'll have to wait and see which, but like you could easily have one of your supports rotate between mid and the safe lane a bit, pressure the Zeus and give him some harass, give Lean a bit of an edge, and then kind of go back towards the safe lane. I think stacking the jungle is also going to be a big part for DC here. You've got Lean on your side. You can easily clear those stacks, and that's where either Viryu or AUI will be kind of prioritizing that. Zeus also fine at farming stacks, so he may just have to do that himself because I feel like Tusk Undying committed to the offlane. Rubik will be much more about zoning in zoning for the anti-mage as well as potentially going for a gank on mid around the time Zeus hits level 6 maybe. Well, how many times have we seen this? 
Offlaner, straight TP to try to get a ward down, but then there's the TP ahead of time, and Whitebeard again will be like, Aha, what do you think you're doing? Don't even think about it. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. It's so selfless, too, because Whitebeard's not even one of the safe lane players. He's going to be going to the offlane later on, but he's willing to do this, and as a strong, like, level one, like, that's not a hero that you see, and you're like, oh, I can just ignore him and go ward. If you see the Rubik, you say, ah, I'm just going to run past and or trade hits with him, but I'm dying. Hell no. You don't want to trade hits with this guy. Yep. It's going to be Rubik who has those sentries. He plants down a ward, though, before he heads out so they can see if, for whatever reason, Bulba does decide to come back and try to creep down maybe in a closer ward. That's not the case. He'll be waiting out, doing that own lane block, and uh, getting the creeps closer to the tower so he can get that quick burst of XP and then try to get a soul ring right away, if possible. And we'll see. Looks like DC are putting some emphasis on the top rune, to trying to secure it for your war, but it might be a bit too tricky. The level 1 fight of fire is very, very good. Yeah. Lots of straight damage coming out from your Zeus early on, but especially the Undying, the potential decay stacks can be very scary. So it, it looks like they might change and maybe go towards the bottom instead. Yep. Joe's down there scouting it out, but he's not going to go in to contest it once he sees more than one hero. So should be pretty straightforward. Top bounty rune for fire, bottom bounty rune for DC, although... TC gets up quite close here. Shards will block off his escape. Instead, they're going to go for... They should go for AUI. He's been blocked oh, off perfectly. Oh, he's in trouble. He's done for. That is first blood right there. Beautiful block coming out from Moo early on. Yeah. I think that's just a bit greedy from DC. You're up against Tusk Undying. They have so many ways to catch you at the rune. Mm -hmm. They should not have even poked their noses out there. Whether it's a snowball or an ice shards, the catch and the, the kill potential is there. And Moo with a great block. Yep. And it is going to be Fluff again, who will pick up the <laughs> kill. Fluff, last game, down, last Fluff. series, game one, right? He got the three straight kills right away with his Rubik. Yep. He's a KS Lord and continues here and there. But in all seriousness, it's not too shabby for your support to get a big a big boost yeah. like that. Typically, you have to be pretty selfless at the start. That will help him get to something like Boots that much faster. So very nice to have nice early mobile support. But now that we can see DC to deal with the dual lane Bash Brother lineup coming out from Fire, they have. All hands on deck. The support from Dazzle there with the heals. Owie's going to be there to, as you see, dish out those arcane bolts and try to keep them at bay so that TC can have the bit of free farm to kind of work in the lane. Yeah, he's getting even buffed up by, by the Bloodseeker to kind of give him that little extra boost as well. Fluff trying to uh, deal with Bulba here in the off lane and doing a decent job of it. He's immediately gone for a pull, which is something I think he recognized he needed to do because Bulba used the Fissure Block to keep the wave at his tower in. Bulba unsuccessful in dragging the creep pull away, so... His former teammates going at it here. Fluff is just looking to get as much damage as he can on the Bulba. Ooh, and he got a good chunk of damage oh, off of yeah. him. Fluff's also got boots now, so this really increases your kill potential as a Rubik. You can just get to the Earthshaker that little bit quicker, and he doesn't have boots himself to get away. If you want to go gank mid, it just helps your mobility and you're wasting less time, so... This is where the first blood can really help him. He's going to actually TP top. This is an aggressive play from Fluff. Yeah, they're looking to see if they can utilize that set of boots. They're already going to commit and go in for the Dazzle here, who does have the one point into Shallow Grave. Might need to use it on himself. Can he get off in time? Does the heal first. The Grave will come out, but it's only delaying the inevitable. Eventually it will expire, and no, oh, they both turn back in a way, but there's going to be the lift. Woo. And Fluff gets the last hit, as, as he does. Of course he does. No, no who was questioning it? Well, yeah. he'll walk in, and quickly it's fire. Off to a hot start there. 2-0 going to be there. And now 747 heading towards the bottom. The bounty is still going to be there and available. Owie's trying to head that way with that nice move speed, but won't be there. Instead, we'll knock him in the noggin with the concussive shot and Arcane yeah. Boulder 2. And 747's like, if you want to trade, I'll stand. Yeah. But he doesn't want any more of it, so he'll step back in a way. But this is going to be the lane here. Up top, looks like it could potentially yeah. be the three on three until Owie did depart, but Fire clearly trying to not allow TC to be comfortable at all. He tries to creep in to quickly snag a, something from the side shop, but he shows that uh, nowhere is going to be safe. You don't want to go out too far. And DC basically say, okay, now that you've got three heroes here, we're not winning this lane. Let's rotate one of our supports bottom and pressure the anti-mage. So I think... Oh, they got TC oh, though. Pull they, back telekinesis. Yep. He does get the grave, but can he make it out? What beautiful body block. They just put him into a corner, put him into a hurt locker, and they wipe them both out. Beautiful setup right there. Again, Moo is feeling it with the shard play. Yeah. And this is just one of those scenarios where AM's probably like, okay, Skyrath come down here. I could do with some help, guys. But if you're crushing the other lanes, it's fine. AM can always catch up and farm. Doesn't need to have the complete safe free farm for now. And with how much damage they're doing to TC, this is going just fine. At some point, 
Rubik will probably head back towards the safe lane, offer a bit of help to Jero, but for now, Jero's more than okay with the trade that's happening around the map. Yeah, and even middle, which has been relatively quiet up to this point, they have seem to match almost even. I mean, with UR with a slight edge at 22 CS to 747-17, it's not too dramatic one or the other way. Zeus, a fresh level 5, UR just an inch ahead right there, so... This is first nightfall now. We'll see what kind of early movement's going to be coming out. It looks like DC are going to be going for the bottom rune, which is the haste. Ooh. That leaves top to beat a bounty, but that's a haste rune now on your Lena. Not yet bottom. level 6, though, but once she gets it, she'll probably want to put that haste to use. Yeah, if they spot Fluff, he could be in some trouble here. But it doesn't look like they're going to do so right away. Lena's still lingering around. and This is where you see that Rubik just TP bottom. You're like, okay, that's a free kill. Nice and juicy, but... The better kill is potentially the mid lane on the Zeus. So. Well, Yawar does pop the haste. Looking to go in. LSA does catch us the end of it right there. And with the help from Owie, they might have the burst to do it. 747 tries to turn it. And get as much damage as possible onto Yawar, but it's not going to be happening. Digital Chaos get themselves onto the board by getting that kill. Yeah. Top lane, though, the harassment still continues here. Team Fire just trying to be the bullies. Keep them back and away. TC... Still manages to scrap together 23 CS, even with all this heavy harassment, as you see right now. Again, another set of shards. A tombstone going to be committed here. First rotation is going to be coming in. It's going to be Dazzle. Dishes out the heal. And they know they don't want to overcommit, it looks like, though he is able to get off the decay. They got to know there is going to be a grave. It is only level one. If there's a lot of space, he can't get close enough. Now they turn back onto him, and he's not going to get the grave off. They go back for TC, and they're going to get that one as well. Wonderful play coming out from these two. Whitebeard and Moo. Split oh, them apart and take advantage of the weaker Dazzle first. It's so good. And now this lane gets impossible. You've got levels, level 4, about to level 5 on both. They've got Arcane Boots and they've got a Bolon Tusk. They've got Sustain now and a constant flow of mana to just keep nuking down this lane. This is just no longer a lane that TC can really go to. He needs both supports there, but at the same time, both supports don't want to be there. They're wasting their time and not pressuring other places on the map. So if anything, TC maybe just needs to rotate into the jungle needs to go somewhere else because I'd say AUI is getting quite a decent amount done on this roaming Skyrath for now. Who tries to keep TC in check at that point? They would have loved to make a go on that Zeus in the mid, uh, mid lane just earlier while Yawar was at his level 6, but as you can see, he's been a bit dry on mana here. Does get the bottle back. We'll be able to quickly burn through it. Follow up this new DD rune. Oh, TC in trouble top. Oh, they make another jump onto him. Back now with the Undying. They're looking to body block him quite a bit. Dazzle's already here, and it's going to force out the UR rotation, and he's coming back in here. He's got a DD, and he's got a Laguna. If they see it, they got to go. You just give up the two man. You've, you've already got the Lena rotation. They use the Soul Rip, though. They, they try and keep it alive a bit longer, but I think they realize, okay, that's a DD Lena. Well, they're going on bottom. They know that there's going to be no one here to help out, so they go for Owie, and they're going to get it, and it's Jo who grabs it. Oh, Fluffy didn't get that one, though. Jo though, the one who's happy to grab it right now. Their core player going to be taking it in, and now Fire going to be 7-1. to one. The second they see the rotations come top, they know there's an opportunity to make a move on bottom with the Luna, no support to come. They do it. Yeah. Just great reactions and responses all, all over the map from Fire. They see the hero's top, they go on bottom, they see the Lena rotate, they immediately back off from the, the top lane, the off lane. Denied. And Whitebeard and Moo with this Tusk Undying combo are just on point. Very, very well done. Clearly been pretty damn frustrating here to TC. Even now, he's like, I just gotta get something. A little side jungle camp if possible, but the harassment keeps coming out. Still trying to even get to his level 6 and have that rupture, but it looks like he wants to go elsewhere. Yep. Bottom lane maybe trading up here well, with Bulba. They move though. in, Soul. Leading with a Fissure, but as you said, he's not level 6. Pops it now, gets the Rupture, oh. can't get it off. Jail hides right into the dark. I think he TP'd expecting to get level 6 immediately from the Creep Wave, but didn't have it, and that would be a great kill to get on Jail. You're not expecting that Bloodseeker to just suddenly be in your bottom lane, and with the Rupture, it was oh, a great way to find look, a kill. Look at 747. Dyer's suddenly he's also in his bottom yeah. lane. Here he comes. Boom! Oh, ouch! What was that? Oh, TC wrecked right there. Jo was getting ready just in case he managed to survive, but man, that Zeus damage is just unreal. I mean, that's, I mean, Bloodseeker amplifying the damage that he takes himself as well. So yeah. that's that's the issue that you, when you're someone like a Zeus or a Lena, you wait to see that Bloodseeker rage himself, and then suddenly you're like, okay, now I got myself a kill. TC, I I know him, very nice guy, very quiet player, but I'm sure he's getting tested right now. The calmness, gotta be able to shake this one off because it's. 
a rough start for him. Zero and three. Yeah. Not just him. Everyone on the DC yeah. side. AUI is about to find himself on the receiving end of a nasty gank. Uh-oh. He's looking to waltz back. Tombstone goes down. Fortunately for him, he seems to have been able to make it out just in time. Walks away from trouble. Backup is coming. And uh, they're going to be waiting a bit here. But they'd love to take a fight. Yawara yet to even dish out that big Laguna. The pings are already flying, though. J.O. letting him know there is trouble nearby. They don't have that deep of vision on the side of fire, but it's just enough to get an idea as far as where DC are. And this is just all the more space for J.O. to keep on farming this bottom lane on his AM. Perseverance now complete on the way towards that battle fury. Yeah, they'd love to just be able to keep creating space for AM by fighting with the other four heroes. And Zeus kind of allows them to do that with that global Here we go, ultimate. boys. Mid lane after a smoke movement in. They annihilate the Dazzle. Easy quick kill for them. The Bash Brothers continue here. Now in the mid lane, it's going to be Moo and Whitebeard and company. They annihilate the Dazzle. Now they're going to follow up with the, some harassment onto this Tier 1. Oh, yeah. This, you are in the lane and being taken out of the game without even having to gank him once. He's 0-0-1, zero, zero but the one kill he got was a kind of big haste rune that didn't really shut down the Zeus all that much. And the Zeus ultimate has been a kind of key spell for this fire team so really justifying the pick here fire already playing in that previous series maybe uh, warmed up a little bit ready to go dc maybe need to shake off of this bit of a cold yeah. start i seem really confident this smoke gank from dc now coming out i feel really needs to pay off to see where they looked ahead jay was actually tp top i think he just doesn't feel safe in his own jungle he saw lena pick up the room which was just an illusion but oh. Who's looking for TC? Maybe a Zeus ultimate could come in. He's going to TP out. They're sweeping through the jungle trying to find AM, but AM's now showed on the top side of the map, and now they're just like, oh, this smoke gank isn't going to find the AM. We might get the Zeus, but that's just not the hero we wanted. They move in. They got the Yules. Here comes Dying's the quick TP here. from company. They'll commit a lot for it, but will they get him? He goes down. So they are going to grab that, but they could lose a lot more in exchange. Snowball's going to be flying in. Here comes trouble, but it goes right into an Echo Slam. Nice counterplay coming out from Bulba on that one. Whitebeard, though, already in too deep. Commits onto that one. Owie's going to be picking up the double. And look at this. It's going to be the first digital Zeus chaos big back. fight this way. But Zeus is back in action. Look at this. Even Fluff getting involved. Whitebeard's going to get the kill from the grave. His tombstone. Doing a hefty amount of okay. work there. It turns it into a two for three. Yeah. Uh, I guess three for three with the Zeus, buy Zeus buyback. Yes. So. yes, yes, yes. It was, it was still a... Fairly favored DC fight, three for three, and a buyback on Zeus. Um, but again, Antimage is kind of farming while most of that's going on. Jo, oh, okay, and he, he got gets, Bulba down. He it turns it to a four for three. So Bulba went in there, was hoping to land the Fissure so Owie could follow it up with a big Mystic Flare, which he just got now after that earlier skirmish. But the Fissure is going to be off the mark, so yeah. Zeus simply steps back, steps back in, gets that kill on the Bulba. Yeah, if it wasn't for Antimage just farming while all that's going on, it would be great for DC, but it feels like the end result is still just space created for fire, AM now TP's bottom. We haven't seen any pressure under the AM from the Bloodseeker pick and it's just, it's been a bit too comfortable for J.O. for the first 12 minutes and as a result he will have a probably about a 14-15 minute battle fury with Treads. Stopping off at a, oh no sorry, that was a Bloodseeker. Not stopping off for anything apart from the uh, yeah, the Treads on the way. Fairly standard. 12-minute rune is a regen on bottom, which is going to be picked up from 747. War grabs the one for top, and they make their return. DC now with that Mystic Flare potential could look for some more picks. I don't know how quickly they want to chew through these smokes, but they already do have one here for Owie, and it looks like they're trying to find that little corner to hide in, possibly, and pop it here with your war. But they're going to wait for now, just kind of pinging out their bit of vision from the high ground. Fluffs on the other side. It looks like he wants to creep in. This is my chance. Maybe I'll see some stacks here. Uh, they're going another in. deep ward, maybe. Nope, look at ward or anything. Just backs off and has that sol stolen dragon slave. So Fluff actually does quite a lot of burst damage now with the fade bolt dragon slave oh, combo. Yeah. Very big 320 plus the 280 of fade bolt, throwing a couple of auto attacks with the telekinesis, and you're sitting pretty yep. here. And Zeus has a stack here, but may give it to the Anti-Mage, or at least some of it to the Anti-Mage, as Jo's 400 gold short of Battle Fury. Yep. He's going to blink in and... Thanks yep. for doing the work. 
Packs the two big ones and I, he sees all these heroes bottom. He's already farmed out the safe camps in his jungle, so he's basically really needs to finish this battle for you as soon as possible so he can pressure lanes in. Bottom lane, Fluff trying to put to use that Dragon Slave. Steals the Fissure, but he's going to be eating Whoa. the Mystic Flare. He goes down, but Zeus counters back with the global. Yep. And he's going to be finishing off Bulba as the exchange. So it's an off laner for his support. Unfortunately, Bulba does get the bit of yeah, XP. Fl yeah, Fluff doesn't get the XP. If, he'd got, if Zeus has got the kill first, that would have been huge, but... Ooh, Still. they see Owie here with low mana, and J.O.'s like, mmm, free void kill. Boom! See you later. Out of that. Easy Owie grab and that. bounty rune there. Oh, J.O. He's, he's mm. got Battle Fury and some now. 370 gold on top of the uh, Battle Fury completed back at base. I haven't found this Observer Wood yet in the Fire Jungle, which is a potential threat to the Antimage here. 747 uses a second bolt. He's used two and missed both. We'll see if he gets they it with ping, this they one. Ping right oh, he's on going to go to the. Oh, okay, there we go. Nicely done from Fluff. Yep. That guy knows how to ward. He knows how to find him. And that means they're going to rid of that little bit of excess vision. One of those things, man. We don't get to see Zeus as often anymore. But is that walking ward sweeper? Never can feel comfortable getting map vision. I mean, we look now at the DC vision, and they're right back into the dark, with the exception of the little bit of defensive vision they have up here at the top to maybe see if Vi uh, Fire do want to invade their jungle now that that tier one top had went down. But outside of that, they don't have anywhere comfortable to go. You even see now TC is just gonna work with the ancient camps yeah. here because it's local and what feels to him safe. But what yes. he doesn't know is it's under a ward nearby. Yeah, typically at this time it's like, okay, if Fire's looking to get aggressive, they're gonna get aggressive in the dire jungle. So he probably feels safer at his ancients than in the, in the jungle. Uh, a lot of heroes are missing and it looks like they are headed towards that top side of the map. Trying to take over the dire jungle, try and pressure this top tier 2 tower. The move for DC is to kind of try and look for a trade around the Radiant side of the map. The bottom tier 1 tower, the Radiant jungle. Uh, it's not, I mean, setting up more wards there to just to get deward by Zeus isn't necessarily a good plan, but they can at least try and take the bottom tier 1. Yeah. Because of that vision, they know exactly where most of fire are. TC's like, this is my chance. I'll go in their woods. I'm going to be farming there. Whitebeard's here. Smoked. Smoke's going to pop. He knows someone's around this corner. Who's it going to be? He drops a tombstone. They're going to need some additional help. Oh, man. He gets blown up with that Mystic Flare quick before help can come. But here's Mu. Goes off that blink. Moves in. Gets one set up. That's going to make it for Zeus. And then he gets the follow-up kill on Owie. <laughs> Turning one pick into a two-for-one favor for Fire. And all the meanwhile, J.O. doing AM things. Happy to cut the wave and add the pressure at the top. Fire from top to bottom playing a... Stellar game of Dota. Yeah. Moo on this Tusk has just been such a playmaker. I mean, even going back to the previous series here again, I mean, he has a DD route there, so it helps, but just rushes the Blink Dagger every single time, and it means if your opponents are getting cocky, like, oh, there's this Tomb here, we can kill it, there's nothing there. Oh, mid lane, combo yep, coming in. Yules, follow up, boom, bang! The standard Lena combo. Yep. And Fluff will get dropped. But. Yeah, Mu Mu's Blink Dagger Rush just works so well with the Undying, because if they're focusing the Tomb, you just blink on them, you chain disable them with Warus Punch and Snowball, and suddenly there's a couple zombies on them, the Tomb hasn't died, and Mu's just got a lot done as a result, so... He's been a, a big playmaker for this team, and will continue to be so here in this series against DC. Anticipating possibly a, a bit of a longer game, TC picks up a Midas to prepare. Saw this from Waga. In the root gaming in their first oh. round, didn't end up working out for him. TC seeing if he can at least just kind of recoup from the rough, rough start yeah. that he had in that top lane. Because of how much he's struggling, it's like getting an item like a blade mail is just not going to... It'll, it'll do some damage, but it's never oh. going to be turn the, turn the fight There's around. There's that Fissure-Mystic Flare combo happening on the bottom and a, an Echo Slam just to make sure he does not get away with his life. So two big ultimates committed right there. We'll it's take down the Tusk. It's Bulb up to his Blink Dagger as well, so that helps out a lot. But yeah, the Minus on Bloodseeker very much about the fact that he can't really fight now, and it's it's not going to necessarily secure him the better late game compared to an Anti Mage. But there's no item to buy now that's going to help you out. So uh, uh, it's even with a Midas, I don't even know if that will match up with just how quick and mobile AM can be with his farm pace. 8.7k oh, yeah. of net worth in comparison to TC's at 5.5. He's got a long ways to go to catch up, and it ain't going to be coming easy. This Bloodseeker yet to really be on the offensive, still 0 and 4. I don't foresee any sort of quick catches with the rupture blood right follow up. Not this game. It's going to be a bit difficult. Yeah, already with the Yasha online now. He hasn't gone for the Vlads this game, so 
We'll be going straight into the Mantis style. Once an escape against the Skyrath Ancient Seal, potentially even the, the Lena Yule's stun combo you can also get out of. If you time the Manta correctly, you can dodge the LSA out of the uh, Yule's. So really nice time to have, and I think he just wants that safety that it provides over the farming power of the Vlads. Smoke on Courier. The three of these guys look like they might want to go out on a bit of adventure here. Now, Bulba does not have the Echo yet, though he does now have the Blink. It could set up that Mystic Flare set up a lot easier with it. Or even something for Yawar to just kind of waltz in and pop off a Yules and a Laguna. But they're not going to push out for any opportunity yet. Not towards the bomb side. Yawar may just want to finish off his Aghanim Scepter about 200 gold short. I don't imagine he's going to go for a Bloodstone against the Antimage now. Probably feels like, hey, they've got some opportunities to maybe get kills on AM over the next 5-10 minutes, and the best way to do that is with an Ag Scepter. I don't know if we talked about it, but that Bloodstone on 747, not even just that, 2,000, over 2,000 gold yeah. in reserve on top of it here. Very farm Zeus. Ooh, faked out the ultimate there. Good thing he didn't use it. Biru would not have been taken down. Pulls back. Maybe try to fake out a grave. Yeah. The other thing, we do see a medallion on Biru, so they've got some some Roche taking potential on the dire side if they can get a pick. Like, to me, DC need to use their smokes well, get a pick off, and then turn it into an objective. Either some of these towers on the map, like the tier 1 bottom, or Roshan, which may even be preferred at this stage of the game, uh, considering where we are deep into the mid-game, so... I think smoke uses needs to be on point, and I imagine this, yeah, there we go. Lena Ags is potentially what they're waiting for before they go for the smoke play. Also, the Earthshaker Blink. That's another item which can look to turn things in DC's favor. Yeah, you are really recovering nicely on the farm. After picking up the Yules, his Agnums is now going to be coming in. And speaking of farm as well, Owie puts together the drums on his Skywrath Mage. So it gives him a bit more durability, and obviously some additional sweet move speed and he'll step back for now fluff has been spending some solo time farming up did he manage to purchase no he's still holding okay. we'll see he's Just got a bracer for now and tranquils quite a ways off before he can get the the dream blink dagger or something for a setup yeah, just the bare basics. Fly. He's actually well below the anyone else as far as net worth goes. Both dire supports getting more farm beer you. Sitting on 48 CS is a decent chunk. You've got the drums on Owie with 31 oh. CS. Oh, swarm coming top lane. Got four DC huddled around. Where could oh, this JL Lina. be? Lena's going to see him. They're going to see him now, but it's a bit too late. The Yules is already going to be there. Here comes the full combo. Is it enough burst? It could be with the Agnums, and it looks like it will. He's going to get dropped there at the end. Oh, the global coming just a bit too late, but it's not as if they really knew what was happening. They just knew that DC was gone and doing something fishy. Mid lane, jumping Echo. Not really big, but they're looking for the follow-up, at least on Moo, and they're going to get it. Yuar there participating as well, makes the rotation to the bottom, and 747 doesn't even want to risk it. He gets the ruptured, and he's just like, I'm going to off myself. Oh. And we'll live in, oh my god, and there's destruction bottom everywhere. To the yeah. Skyrath. That was a huge turnaround for DC. That's exactly what they needed. It's a four- for nil, and that yeah. means they can move into the Roche Pit and get it started. What a this big a, turnaround. That's the, I, I expected them to find like a one to two hero pick off and go Roche, but they just found four unanswered. I mean, just great execution on the AM kill. Bulba was there with the, the Blink Fisher. It was needed. The combo from Lena wasn't going to get the kill on its own. Needed that extra stun, and then immediately TP's meant for the Echo Slam. Fire kind of like... They respond to, okay, our aim just got ganked by a lot of heroes top. Let's pressure mid, but Bulba was just so fast on the TP there, so... Suddenly, DC find themselves in a great position. Yeah, this puts TC much closer to this BKB. Less than a thousand away from finishing it off. Maybe this Bloodseeker will be able to crawl back into some action here. Could be that real pain in the butt to this AM. AM, though, also still in a good spot, even though he was picked off. Still holds his ulti orb, looking to build and finish off this Manta. Nearly got it. it. Will help out quite a bit, especially against that ancient seal of the Skywrath Mage. Ooh, Whitebeard. Considering going up <laughs> the stairs is going to get quickly pinged out. Bulba says, oh, don't want to get too close. Steps back and away. And it looks like Fire are going to put their attention at this bottom tier 1, see if they can bring it down. Yeah. They've got even Anti-Mage rotating in as well. About to hit level 16, which is 
pretty important on Anti-Mage as far as being able to fight with your team, even just with a couple of items, like having just levels on AM, level 3 Mana Void does a huge chunk of damage. If that Lina has used Laguna and suddenly you're looking at like a 10-20% to 20 Mana Pool on a Lina, you will take a huge amount of damage as will anyone standing next to you. Looks like it will be possibly a trade here. Bottom tier 1 for the top that Yuar's working with now. And there it goes. Could do a little he's bit got no mana word. pool, but he's got the Aegis, so... Yeah. is way deep here. Making them think that maybe he put a ward up there. He didn't. He wasn't even holding one, but... Certainly uh, forced Biru to kind of ping it out, and he could waste the sentry there for now. Jo yeah. gets the Ancient stack as well on the DC side. Just a double sec, but... Still a nice ingest of farm going his way. So has 1,200 gold on top of the Manta style now, and... Jo's in a pretty good position now that he's got the Manta. Right, they fire off the Zeus ulti and they'll get their bit of intel, but it's just to show that DC are in a pretty reserved position right now. Kind of gathering back. Almost feels like they're going to be looking to make a move out here. There's still a smoke on their Dazzle. Maybe something they look to consider to use. They still have that Aegis. At some point, they may consider putting it to use. If this was to break out and possibly a 5-on-5 five -five team fight, do you think the upper hand kind of goes to the side of DC with their where they are right now. Um, I think even with the Aegis, it's going to come down to the Earthshaker initiation what he gets done. He's got Blink and full stuff, Bulba does, and these just give him a huge amount of mobility and playmaking potential, but if he doesn't hit like a Dream Echo Slam and an amazing Fissure, I think the team fight still favors Fire just because of how strong Anti-Mage is. Um, Jero even picks up a Vitality Boost to just help him survive the Lena oh. combo, and it's coming mid. They go to mid instead for your war now, and it's going to get him. That's oh. just the Aegis His Shadow Blade's on cooldown too, so he can't Shadow Blade away. He's going to come back up. Are they going to have enough to burst him through? Meanwhile, they do get Whitebeard with the help of the Mystic Flare. Shallow Grave will come off. Yawar's still holding on for now, trying to make it away. Big jump in from Bulba. Echo on the J.O. Yawar is going to be going down. They roll on forward. Whitebeard committing his buyback to get back into the action here as they snowball in for Bulba. Uppercut the fall. They're going to grab him. Owie, no more man to work with. Should be going down here. Good catch with the shards. Biru making him work for it with the Grave. Can he TP out? He actually made it back to base. I can't believe it. No! <laughs> oh. Spoke too soon. See you later. Well, you're, you're correct. He did make it back to base. Yeah. <laughs> he had a better resting place for his corpse, I guess. But. Can you just imagine he makes it and he goes, <gasps> <sighs> boom, dead. <laughs> oh, you asked man. who would win a team fight, and you, you got your answer there. It was I mean, I, a bit unfortunate for Lena getting caught out completely alone, lost the Aegis instantly, at least got the Laguna off for the one kill, but... That was with, like, you, the initiation on the AM didn't pan out, but they still got the rupture off on J.O. The scary thing is, J.O. can still fight and get moved around. The Snowball moved J.O. when he was in a rough spot. He then got rolled onto the Earthshaker, and he doesn't take damage while he's rolling because he's in the Snowball. So, in a lot of ways, Tusk works so nicely against this Bloodseeker when you rupt when the Antimage gets ruptured. And we saw it there as J.O. now finds himself up to 3.3k gold. Heart of Taras almost complete. Bit of a different build-up AM from what we see from, like, your Ritsu and stuff, but J.O. just going with the cookie-cutter kind of a build-up and looking to make it work. That extra bit of durability could be very awkward for the side of DC because they have yet to really dig into the real damage department. They got the big burst, I know, with your Agnum's Laguna, but when you look beyond that, you know, Bloodseeker still trying to put together that first real right-click kind of an item. Only has the Yasha build-up for now. Looks like it's nearly done, but could eventually need a bit more. But here comes DC. They smoke up. They're looking to invade. They could catch Whitebeard. Oh, J.O. Oh, blinks right past him and into trouble. Goes right for the silence. He's going to get the Manta off. That means they're going to be able to step away and oh. annihilate Owie after he commits it. Follow up on to Dazzle. Unfortunate smoke movement. It looked like potentially it could pan out to be something good, but J.O. just jumps right into him, catches him with a bit of misfooting, and they try to lock him down, but that Manta... Easily side splits, and that puts Aoi into his own time bomb. Yeah. Not convinced by that. They did that without Bloodseeker or Lena. Lena was pushing top. I feel like that three hero smoke, if they find Anti Mage, like even if Anti Mage is alone, they don't kill him. They need the Lena damage output. So to me, that's a smoke gank, which is maybe a good call if you have Lena with you. But without the Lena, I don't think you can justify using that smoke there. And Lena's still pushing this top lane. Getting some extra bit of pressure, has some good farm, 2k, saved up. Kings out here, it's Whitebeard and Fluff. 
Hold hands. They get a ward to the low ground. It will be spotted from the sentry. Even plants a secondary one. It's like, no, no extra vision for you. Moves out that OBS. Fire don't want to risk anything else. It looks like they'll just take their bit of advantage and yep. walk away. Yeah, Geo comes up top and no longer can really get killed by Lena or Bloodseeker. Maybe the two together, but if you get ruptured, you can just blink at some trees, TP away. I mean, you can just straight up TP away if there's no one to cancel your TP, so... He should be fairly safe against like this one, two hero smoke duo, uh, gank duo, but there's a lot coming his way. Bulba as well is there, and Jo. Okay. Perfect setup. Blood rights there. There's the stun, the silence, Laguna. He'll get the Manta off. He tries to go for a fight. They commit the echo as well, and he finally goes down. Cost quite a bit, but it's a big prize for him because he's top of the net worth and will hand over a chunk of change. About a 17, 1800 gold swing on that one pick alone. Didn't have mana for the ulti there, otherwise that could have been turned around, so... Could, oh, I don't know, he, he may have... He probably still dies there, but he could have got the kill on Lina oh, with yeah. the, the mana void. Mm -hmm. He was farming on about, I don't know, 200 mana, 250, so... I had to use a big chunk of it for the Manta style. But the uh, lockdown was timed out pretty damn well. He was able to get the Manta off at the end, but... They get the kill nonetheless. Yep. And I'm curious to see for the rest of Fire, if they want to do anything with this bit of time, knowing that... Echo's down, Laguna's down. A lot of the pressure's up at top lane. I don't think they can make it to bottom too fast to get a hold of Little Dazzle here, but they are going to try. First TP's already here, and of all people, it's Moo. So Moo's like, hey, buddy, what's up? Come in and mm, hit him a yeah. bit. <laughs> Got any backup? Are you going to TP out? What's the plan? Uh, he's <laughs> like, I can't do anything. He just knows there's no way he's going to make it out. Now, there's going to be the snowball, so he can't grave TP there here. There's no Boris punch there. Oh, it's not happening. Meanwhile, though, Wipeer walks right past the Mystic Flare. Eventually, Moo is going to get the uppercut onto your okay. Dazzle, who will go down. He almost, like, wanted to let Dazzle stay alive longer there. He could have punched before the grave, but, eh. Didn't matter. He had everything under control, and... Moo is going to get bottled up as well just to keep everyone healthy. And it looks like they want to keep on going here at the bottom lift. lane. Lift! They got it! Pull back into Tombstone! Uppercut! He's dead. Unstoppable right now for 747, aka Suzy, pulling together a pretty damn good Zeus game. Ten charges he's sporting right now with the Blink Dagger. Now they're going to tackle some damage here onto this tier two. J.O. Feels like he's been dead forever. Finally going to be coming back in just a few seconds' time. And you can look to participate, or at least just kind of relieve some of the pressure and farm up the top lane if you'd like. But this tier 2 is coming down. Be yeah, a good fi grab for fire. Fire don't want this game to drag on too much. Antimage will hit that kind of peak in the, probably the next 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, you've got heroes like Undying who aren't going to necessarily scale all that well to late game. Late game. Zeus does alright late game, just because his magic damage nukes is percentage based. So We'll see... Uh, what he's going to go into after this Aghanim Scepter, which he's just picked up. So a lot more damage output coming out. And that's where squishy heroes like Skyrath, Earthshaker, Dazzle, all just sitting around the 1,000 to kind of 1,200 HP mark will take a lot from this Ag's ulti. He doesn't like this. Does the Grave, Ooh, which gives Curia. it to Fluff. Courier also going to be going down. He moves in and upcuts that instead. Dazzle's going to be forced to dish out the Weave. There comes the Zeus ulti. He's going to be very low. Mantle Illusions want to see if they can just solo out the Dazzle here. He doesn't like it. Ah, I got to get away. He's going to be able to run and make his way out from trouble. No casualties except for the Courier. Yep. But Fluff is also able to get a pretty nice snag in grabbing that Shallow Grave. Yeah. I think Moo could have got the kill on Dazzle, but just oh, if they decided Courier was out money. Alina combo here with that Grave. Oh, they brought the Sentry in, but maybe too late. Oh, oh they, got they got it. Got Walks right into range. Beautiful lift back. They have to walk out from the blood, right? Now there's going to be the big committed jump, but there's that grave, and it's going to keep Moo alive. Can he get a snowball off or anything to make it away? Goes for the TP. Not going to make it out. Jump in from Bulba. Big echo slam on the J.O.'s head, and he's going to get annihilated. Digital chaos. Nice little comeback play there in the bottom lane. Looked like it was going to be a promising start for fire, but very nice turnaround for them. Yeah. You are with the BKB just makes it so they couldn't really all in to kill him, and... I think an item that caught fire by surprise there. They had the detection for him, but they lift him up, and then suddenly it's like, oh, wait. He's going to just... We can't actually blow him up using our Zeus and using all our, the damage up what we had that, that we'd want to do, so... Puts fire in a bit of a rough spot, even with the Heart of Trask. AM still struggling to stay alive, and... That's a big concern for them, I'd say. TC has well and truly got back into this game now. Completes the Sanjin Yashiga with the BKB Midas. 
and another Aegis gonna go the way of DC. They've been getting like kind of pummeled throughout this game and every t the two fights they've won have come right when they can get a Roshan. That's been the really big thing for them. This Rosh goes down or first in line. I gotta get that. Grabs up the Aegis, we'll pull it on out. Digital Chaos showing that there's definitely a lot of spunk in them still. Only about a 2,500 net worth advantage. XP is actually the other way now because of these huge swings. Almost feels like they kind of plotted out from the get-go. Fire, they'll get their advantage. They'll get up and ahead, but that will only make the berry that much juicier once we're able to kind of get these kills and get these picks. I mean, so much of a bigger net worth swing. Yeah, and DC are just spreading the farm really well. You've got Curtis about to complete a Scythe of Vice on Skyrath Mage. Just 800 gold short of it. That's crazy. That is... Even yeah. Bulba. He has a Shadow Blade now on his Earthshaker. Yeah. Some funky new items here that Fire may not suspect, but it's actually Fire who want to be a bit sneaky. Smoking down mid lane. Moose going to make the committed jump. Trying to go for Owie here. There's going to be Uppercut looking to sidestep. Follow up. They got the Grave. Zeus Ulti goes out. Rupture to fly. He's going to lock J.O. in place. And boom! Zap of Whitebeard's going to be going down from the huge hitting Laguna from Yawar. Tomb is also easily going to be taken care of. But look at the return power. Fluff with the stolen rupture. Gives TC a taste of his own medicine. And will take him down. That allows 747 to get the pick off. Wicked sick for him right now. 11 charges on that stone as they walk away. Making it a blood seeker for a undying trade. It's a good way for DC to take a fight. The anti-mage once ruptured cannot engage. He's stuck kind of back near the tree area. The tombstone was already committed up near like the tier 3 mid tower. So the tombstone and the AM are two heroes or two units that can't move. The tombstone stuck where it is. The AM ruptured. And through fire it's like do we fight around the tombstone or do we fight around the AM? They decided to fight around the tombstone without the AM. Managed to make it a one for one. So it was a kind of a decent brawl for them in the end. But it was a very risky fight considering they couldn't get the anti-mage involved. Now DC just kind of regroup and will push themselves right back out. They still have Aegis control here. As you are, will farm the bottom. 2k gold. He actually just spends it. What is he getting? What is he getting? Travels, I think. Boots of yeah, travel. Travels. You're right. More mobility. And if he wants to continue this split push game, can continue to do so and then always have that yeah. transportation available even on a lower cooldown to get involved in where the fight could break out here. Wonder if Fire, considering mm. going for another kind of smoke play, doesn't seem to be it, but they'll just do it the old fashioned way for now. They have Moo in lane. Oh, that's a juicy looking dazzle. If Moo can get the jump on him. From his point of view, he's going to barely see him now. How you doing? Snowball in, uppercut. There's the burst from Zeus. There's the finish with the shards. Actually, J.O. creeps in for one last auto attack and will take it. 3,300 for him, my goodness. They scouted out AUI here at the Ancients. He picks up his Hex now. That's a big scary item for Antimage to have to deal with. But AM up to 4k gold. We'll see where AM goes next. As much as it's nice to get these defensive items like hard, and you could potentially even go for a Lincoln Sphere to deal with Rupture, to deal with the Hex, I think you're just better off going for Firepower. Fire, like, just fight aggression with your own aggression. Pick up something like... An Abyssal Blade, that's although... That's what I was saying as well. All these BKBs coming up. Maybe an Abyssal... He's going to go BKB, in. though. He's going another defensive item, which... Yeah. I, I, you can't really blame him when he's being put under so much pressure, and it does allow him to engage. It doesn't help with the Laguna Blade. doesn't help with the Rupture, though, and that's just where... You pick up an Abyssal, you Radiant blink on someone like Alina, like a Bloodseeker, you can instantly kill them with the Abyssal Manta-style Mana Void combo, so... I, I mean, I assume he's going to go for Abyssal as his next item, but I'm not even sure of that because Butterfly is another item you really want to get against a Bloodseeker who's starting to become a right-click carry. Looks like a smoke plays in the works here for Digital Chaos. I was thinking at first they would let Yawar lead out in front and they would wait behind him, but it looks like Yawar instead will go, pressure a different lane, and then rendezvous with them with the help of his boots of travel. We'll see, though. Bulba leading out the front. He's got Echo and his Blink ready. Oh, they're going to creep in right behind them, guys. This is going to be a beautiful setup if they can get the catch. He creeps in Shadow Blade. They see J.O. Immediate Echo. Oh, Fluff going to get sheeped up beautifully from Owie, so he can't help out. J.O.'s able to get the BKB and Manta off and annihilates Owie. Uses him with his own weapon. 
And now that's gonna blow the hell up out of TC. Get saved with the grave, but not for much longer. Gonna go for a valiant TP here. Can they stop him? They can. They can. He goes down. That means they're gonna get the Bulba follow up. They're gonna get the dazzle. They're gonna get Yawar. It is gonna be his Aegis, but it looks like it may just be a five man wipe on the side of DC. And it sure as hell could be here or not. BKB TP. See you later. Ends up being a four for one trade. Yawar makes it on the end at the expense of his BKB, but what a hell of a fight. J.O. having that BKB certainly paid off there. He's able yep. to just pop it off, sees Owie, uses the ult, and it's a bit of destruction. Oh, man. That, yeah, that Skyworth dropped instantly, and it did damage to everyone, and now there's just no defense left. Bloodseeker is a buyback, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It's really hard for Lean to go in and engage without that BKB up, so that's where, yeah, Yawar survives, but his ability to defend, very limited. Well, okay, he can do that. <laughs> well, he may pay for it with his life. Yeah, he moves in for a quick Laguna, but he's going to be going down. How's five buyback. buyback? And he uses it with TC, and they're like, let's play. J.O. not going to be going anywhere. Owie catches him with the sheep. Ancient seals the follow-up. Has no Manta. He's stuck under the Mystic Flare and will be going down. A buyback to finish off J.O. here. The rest of the fire company already long gone. Just kind of forgetting about the, or maybe he didn't even, it didn't even register that Skyrath had a sheep stick yet to him. Yeah, he you did use in the last fight, but it was such a chaotic fight that yeah. I think AM just, well, it was on his mind that, okay, there's a Skyrath Hex. Because otherwise he could have blinked to the low ground behind him and then look for the TP out afterwards. Although even that might have not been successful, but goes right back the other way. DC hold onto their base. Does cost them two buybacks on Lena as well as Bloodseeker. So it's an expensive hold, but... They may be able to just go right back the other way and force an anti-mage buyback, so that could at least even the scales a little bit. They want to see what they can do, though. While this AM is not around, they feel very confident that the remaining four from fire just do not stack up. But the harassment will come out here. That stolen fissure clocks TC on the noggin, and looks like they may have to back up in the meantime. Biru is farming up, and he finishes the Solar Crest on the okay. Dazzle. Kind Radiant's of the unsung tower, hero here and there for DC. Bit of a hard start for him. Two and nine. But he's just doing that selfless play. Get the wards down, and he's able to throw the big main component of that Solar Crest together. Yeah. Antimage hasn't really been a right-click threat this game, though. Most of his teamfight involvement has been the Mana Void. Kind of goes back to talking about Antimage and just getting levels is just more important, it seems like, because so much of his teamfight's coming just from Mana Void, and I think it's going to continue to be that way. Skyrath, you quickly chew through your mana. Like, as soon as you see... You don't even have to watch Skyrath mana pull. If you ever see a Mystic Flare being used, just Skyrath is instantly a good target. That's half your mana pool gone. Mm. 800 mana. And you can always assume that he's used an Ancient Seal or a Concussive Shot or an Arcane Bolt here or there. Even a Scythe sheep. of Vice yeah. costs you yeah, 100 mana. So once you see Mystic Flare, mana void away on Skyrath. That's all, that's all you got to know. And there's nothing really AUI can do to kind of defensively prevent that unless he can somehow farm up a BKB. Well, it's something he... I'm sure he's a very... He's very smart player, so he... Something they recognize, they picked that Skywrath, I believe, after the AM, and he made this kind of commitment into the Sheepstick, increasing his mana pool so dramatically. Only yeah. could make for a better weapon for he's AM. Picks but. up a cloak, so that'll block some of it. May even go into a Veil, like, instead of BKB, just go for a Veil to block some of the mana void damage. So, you know, as uh, Yawar continues his bit of split pressure here, he does have company behind him. They lead in with the shards. Mu actually decides to move in with the help of the Fissure. They, they don't have detection. He eats the Laguna and a Mystic Flare, looking to try to walk away, but not going to make it out. Jumping from Bulba certainly helps. And now they can get the follow up on the fluff here. He will go down. Jo commits on in, but they've already lost a couple of people. Are they going to commit in? Okay. J.O. looks to go up to the north. Meanwhile, over here, they're going to make the chase onto Bulba. Gets the help from the grave, but those zombies continue to chase. Turns for the fissure, but will end up going down. Meanwhile, the chase continues here at the top. J.O. poking here at Owie. It's a slow chase. Biru's there by his side. Still holds the grave, but he's going to be too far to get it off. And now Biru shows himself in lane, and J.O.'s like, hmm, that's another snack. Wants to move in and get it. Gets the help from 747. Desperate does the self grave. Here comes Yawar. Rupture is going to be flying onto Jo. Jo goes for a quick and easy TP, but not going to be happening. Going to get silenced. Going to get stunned up with the help of the poison touch, and he will be the one to go too far. Ooh, a bit too greedy, going a little too far. Oh, gets Jayo. coaxed in from Biru and loses yeah. his own life. He's just killing heroes so slowly. Like that chase on a Skyrath took him. 
like five blinks to finally kill Skyrath. It was just constant, like, okay, blink, hit you a couple times. Oh, gonna blink again, hit you a couple more times. And Skyrath could definitely have lived there if they'd kind of. He, Skyrath went one way, Beery went another. They just didn't coordinate the grave TP because Antimage had no way to cancel it. But I feel like this AM really needs some firepower in the form of an Abyssal Blade right now. Zeus nearly complete with his refresher could prove to be mm -hmm. very difficult for your support, That's this Dazzle, even Skyrath Mage. He does have that cloak, yep. but for someone even like Bulba, who is... Luckily, he did go for the Shadow Blade because if he's relying on just Blink as some sort of initiation, it's, we already know, not very easy against the Zeus. Double ults coming out, and of course, that huge static AoE yeah. proves to be very difficult, but... Double ult now up, and yeah. <laughs> If he Holy uses shit. one casually now, they will get a smoke detection here. Okay, so this is where you probably start using it less as a casual ulti because you want the double ulti in a team fight. Well, he might have to use it here. Bulba, oh goodness! Eats the Laguna, tries to make it away, not going to make it out. The Fissure's going to connect. Follow up Mystic Flare. Going to be easily shrugged off there from Whitebeard. Now, they only do lose their Rubik. Not too terrible, but maybe it's just one is enough because DC anticipate the Roche is going to be up. It is. They're going to run right in there and go for it. This is the third Sterate Roche. Digital Chaos is going to go in and take for themselves. Fire don't look to be like... Okay, they smoke up. They are going to go look to make a play I around this. they can make it in time, though. This Roche is already halfway dead. They're too late. Now, do they go for the fight regardless, though? I don't think so. Aegis and Cheese. Like, if it was just the Aegis like we've seen in the past, that's maybe one thing, but... They've got no Rubik. They're fighting 4v5. Laguna Blade has a very short cooldown. It's back up in five seconds. Fighting into this is not wise. DC, though, they get their Aegis, and they quickly move in. And Zeus just bought Refresher, which means no buyback available. If 747 uh -oh. dies uh -oh. here, uh -oh. Oh, he's, oh, oh. Uh -oh. he's got 15 charges, so it'll be a like a what, 25, 30 seconds respawn maybe? So uh, it's not going to lose you a Rax if Zeus gets picked off, but it's still a big window where DC will have a big edge Radiance in any kind of a clash. Has DC want this tier two. Trying to get the map space back to even here, if possible. And they're going to start with this bottom lane. Everyone Radiance from fire is up and ready. Looks like they could be considering a defense on this they'll back away. It's a little harassment, but eventually the tower will go down, and it looks like DC will take it. Walk back out. Go back to their farm. They have time to work with before this Aegis gets close to expiring. So we'll see what kind of new items they can throw together here. They certainly have the gold now. 2,500 here on Bulba with whatever he wants to go for. Lotus, Agnums, his own refresher. Even Silver Edge against AM is not a bad idea. Oh, yes. It looks, I mean, they got a third Shadow Blade on the Bloodseeker. I'm sure at least one of these three Shadow Blades will be upgraded to a Silver Edge. I guess it's just a matter of who and when. Bloodseeker can disassemble the SMY if you want to uh, get the Sanj out of that. So that may be the way to go about it. And another Sheepstick. Complete now. This one for your war. It's Lots of disgusting lockdown here on the side of DC. Yeah, bit slot limited, but I imagine drops... Okay, I thought it was going to drop Shadow the Yules, drops the Shadow Blade, but yeah. That just means you've got to wait for the Aegis to expire before you open up that new item slot. Here's your global. Want to see what DC's up to, and they'll see that they're hanging around this top lane. Now, it's not as nice as being able to, like, blink in Insta-Hex, but if you can time it appropriately, I'm sure this Hex will come to some super yep. strong use. Yeah. Top lane, we'll push out. Jo has now committed to the, the Basher, so... I feel like this item should have come up sooner. I, I think getting the BKB eventually is fine, but he just needed that damage, and damage output and kill potential that the Abyssal Blade gives you. So I think he's struggled. a lot of his struggle has come from not having this Abyssal Blade sooner. As much as it sounds backwards, like, oh, if he'd had less defensive items, he'd be doing better now. But if, if they time their suns right and coordinate a gank on you, all the defensive items in the world aren't going to save you. We've seen the BKB, the Manta style only really keep him alive that one team fight but for the most part he's been going down regardless of these big tanky defensive items that he's built two minutes to go before this Aegis gets reclaimed DC looking a bit itchy like they want to put it to some use here had made a big push on this top Ooh, look at that a DD rune mm. handy 
Let's grab damage. that up. Maybe that could uh, push them to make something happen. We'll see. But maybe by this point they've accepted that this Aegis will not be of use to them, at least in a fight or a push. And they'll just kind of step back. But during that whole period, they did control the majority of the map. Got lots of farm with it. Fire had been stuck kind of making sure they have that buddy-buddy system in play. Stay nice and close. Looks like they're putting some priority on fluff for some farm here. Don't know if it's just to get some extra wards or get closer to finishing out that Ags. Hmm. We'll have to see. Yeah, this is a pretty good game to have an Ags. A lot of spells you can steal in quick succession. Ruptures, Laguna Blades, Fissure, Echo Slam. It's, there's just nice spells flying all, all around in the team fight. So. Well, they'll keep these lanes pressured away as much as possible. But they're just kind of playing catch up to DC. DC pressures the lane, then fire shows up thereafter to push it out. But if they read appropriately, like right here, if they catch fire moving from one lane to the other, maybe from behind, it could be disastrous. Bulba leads in. Oh, it's a whiff on the fissure as, as Fluff goes to the low ground. A jump in from Moo, and things are turning right over on its ass here for DC. J.O. makes a committed jump in with a BKB, and they annihilate TC. Now they're looking for the next Yawar Force of Laguna, but it's going to be easily shrugged off, and that's going to be your Aegis. DC trying to get the hell out of there. The game plan seemed great, but the execution didn't work. Biru's going to be one of the lone survivors over here, barely on the edge of his grave, and, well, he's going to get dropped. Owie makes it out alive. Bulba makes it out as well, but that did not go according to plan. It looked like it could have been an amazing catch right there for yeah. DC, but... What a quick turnaround for fire. Missing the fissure, and then Moo's initiation was spectacular. He hit the two frontliners with the snowball stun, completely negated DC's kind of early aggression, and that just set up everything from there. The telekinesis came out, the anti-mage, then blinked in to stun heroes with a BKB. He wasn't getting jumped for once. All the previous fights, he's the one getting jumped by like a blink, echo slam, getting chain stunned, doesn't get a chance to use his BKB on his own terms. He's using it like when he's already low or super defensively, so that was finally like a good fight for fire, and it was all Moo on this task. He's a huge playmaker there. And they could just do so much with that crazy tight choke point. Zeus's destruction just easily runs through all of them. We already saw Moo with the lead initiation catches so many with the snowball and the shard combo. And of course, I'm dying dishing out the tomb. It was just destruction. And DC went in and then quickly got out, even. Had the patience to reserve some of their extra bits. It looks like Bulba didn't even get to use the Echo Slam. It's just they committed in, and then it was like this is... It took them a bit to realize this is not their fight. And by then, it was too late. TC just got instantly focus-fired and was just a non-factor there. And same for Yuar as the follow-up. And that was their Aegis as well. So technically, yeah. taking down four. DC seems to be doing better when they don't have Aegis. Both team fights when they have had Aegis are the big fights that Fire have won. That's... That's, this game has just been all sorts of backwards. You've look, got, I mean, look, let's look at the graph. It's whoa yeah. to fire, then back towards DC, then the fire, then the DC, then the fire, then the DC, and now we're back to fire again. And teams, when they're winning the fights and just when things are going their way, it's just coming when they're getting slightly overconfident. You had DC with the Aegis saying, okay, let's make a really risky play when we don't have vision of what our opponent's doing. You had fire kind of over split pushing and having Jo getting picked off a lot when they were like ahead of, by a pretty decent margin. They're probably thinking, oh, we're in cruise control, we're out farming them, we've got all these scary late game items, and then they start getting picked off and feeding away kills. So uh, teams, I think, just need to sharpen up their play when they're in the lead, because no. that so far has been the downfall of both teams. This is a Lotus Orb game for fire. Oh, yeah. This is a Lotus Orb game. Chuck for that on your sure. anti mage and just let him go, go ham. Purging capabilities, remove that pesky silence, remove the Two hexes. slow hexes removed. Imagine everything that could be casually reflected back. Oh, hexes, yeah. Laguna, Rupture. Yep, I, just, I don't even know. This is going to be crazy. I hope they have their wits about them when they see that, you know. Oh, there's double Lotus Orb. I didn't even see the Undying's one. They've got two of them. Oh, boy. These fights, I... I don't know how we're going to keep track of them. I don't. I just... It's going crazy. And you just let the oh, fight speak for itself. TP. Yep, they're moving in. He tries to go, and Moo's going to actually be taken advantage of there. Yuar's okay. going to be going down, but look at Jo making the committed jump onto Owie. Glimmer and a Grave is going to keep him alive. Jo stuck at his spot as he waits for the rupture to be cooled off. There's going to be the Lotus. Commits the Void. Huge damage onto Yuar. He'll come back, but he'll go down shortly thereafter. A one-for-one -one trade, a big one for Fire. TC looking to go on the run here. Can they catch up with him? Well, Jo's in hot pursuit. 
grabs a regen rune. It will be quickly expired, though. Force help from Bulba, but Jayo's still in pursuit. Fissure will fly out. Bulba gets the Shadow Blade off thereafter, and they make their hasty okay. retreat back to base. Yeah. Could have been a lot worse there for DC. Yeah. Smart play from UI. Once that Tusk is on you and you pop your BKB, you, you can't TP. He's going to Warriors punch you. All that's left to do is just stand your ground and fight and throw whatever you can onto the Tusk. And I, I think Tusk should have... Echo, like, he needed to echo himself with the Lotus Orb because then he can at least return the Laguna Blade. But um, yeah, all in all, Fire still get the best out of that. They kill off the Lina and find themselves with Anti-Mage. Still very scary. The thing is here, though, Anti-Mage is maxed out, more or less. He can start considering replacing some of these items. He can go for the uh, Moon Shard for the extra attack speed. Oh, yeah. Moon Shard. I, I think oh, oh, even the Heart of Tarrasque... near bottom. They're moving in. They get the pull-up oh. onto Owie. Sends him right back. I hear a Lotus Orb go off, but I have no idea what the hell's reflected. Okay. It's like a level one Poison Touch gets reflected. What yeah. a Lotus Orb. <laughs> Oof, they were quick to move in and then quick to move right back yeah. out. Tusk back top, and I think Tusk is probably thinking, I need some maybe extra HP or something to deal with this Lena, survive the combo, because he's actually quickly becoming Lena's main target here. But now, as far as the game moving on, though, does DC feel like that they need to at some point try to just close this game out? The longer I it goes and goes, do you think they still can match up well against this Grossly farmed AM? Well, that's just it. Antimage is grossly farmed, but he's not getting grossly more farmed. So the longer this goes, in some ways, DC start catching up to the AM. Yeah, he's going to keep on maybe pushing out lanes and getting up to 10, 20k gold, but he can't use this money. The Moonshot pickup's only like a minor upgrade. To, like It's not even like a big item for an Antimage. Um, and then you look on the DC side, they can still... Like, Bloodseeker still has a lot of room to grow. Oh, they Ooh. move in for Moo. Quickly, Lotus Orb. That means the Silence is actually going owie, so he eats more damage from the Zeus. But look at this catch from Jail moving right in for Yawar. A quick and easy Aww. grave comes up. Riru, but there's going to be a Laguna. Takes out Moo. Jump in. Big Echo. They're trying to save Jail. Reflecting back right back onto Owie once more. They're going to take out TC. Owie should be next. He goes down. Biru, barely holding on. Ghost Scepter, anything he can to get away, but it's not going to matter. He should be going down. Dust is going to be pop while they look for Bulba here. How is Beaver still alive? Oh, yeah. Crave. Now he goes down at the end. Bulba. They ping where he is. He shows himself. He fissures, and he's a man on the run. Uh -oh. Force. Space. He's space for my team, and he has a TP. He makes it okay. out. But that means they're going to go into the pit, and it'll be look, what looks like the first Roche oh. for fire. Those Lotus Orbs. I, Bloodseeker got ruptured. I think it was a Lotus Orb. I don't think Fluff actually stole the rupture at any time recently, so that was... Uh, Big issue for TC. He could not move around. He was ruptured, taking a huge amount of damage, and Mu just stayed alive for too long. Once, but this Lotus Orb is like a semi-invulnerability shield when you're against the Laguna Blade, because your yeah. wire is not going to throw it until that Lotus Orb wears off. It's kind of like using a Blade Mail against a huge nuke damage hero. You don't want to throw that spell and throw your, your damage out until you see it wear off. Yeah. Owie wasn't as fortunate. Throws out the quick silence and probably was planning on following it up with something like yeah. a Mystic Flare, but he ends up silencing himself. Works totally against him because shortly after is when Zeus dishes out his ultimate. So his own magic amplification just wrecks himself at that point. These Lotus Orbs, man, in certain special lineups like this one just seem way too good. And now but Fluff has the Ag Scepter too, so all kinds of amazing spells in a team fight for him to get his hands on. Doesn't have that mobility item. No blink, no force stuff, but... He's not really a big target for DC. He's being ignored when there's an anti-mage and a Zeus dishing out huge damage in a fight. Zeus, by the way, 24 bloodstone charges. I was just going to say that as well. Holy crap. Camp. Susie is just... That's like three lives in a fight now with Aegis and 24 charges. Nearly 3k gold on top of it. And it could be worth just using your bloodstone suicide to save a teammate by healing them up here. This is definitely the stage of the game where... It, if you can save a teammate, anti-mage, even someone like a Tusk, it's worth using that suicide. Here comes Fire, making their approach down this mid lane, forcing DC to converge, as you can see, back inside the castle wall. Uh, what are Fire going to do to try to approach the high ground here hmm. in DC? Could be a bit difficult. They start by doing their D-Ward. So, they pick up... The Moonshot on AM, Undying, also goes for a Vlad's here, so... Gets AM some life steal. I mean, the whole team, some life steal to play around with, but... <laughs> really just the AM who's right-clicking in these fights. 
But man, is he right clicking fast. Oh yeah, now with that moon shard. And this is just where Bloodseeker's not really that scary man fighting carry in a fight. He doesn't have any of those key late game items to deal with anti mage. There's no butterfly. If he had something like butterfly Ab abyssal right now, I'd be like, mm. okay, this Bloodseeker packs a punch and can at least give DC a chance, but he's not finding the farm he needs. They have Susie out in front now with that Aegis. They'll let him just help take down that tier three. It will drop. Rax is now going to be exposed. I just love how it's Zeus orb. on the front line, pushing. Yep. <laughs> Lotus Orb, going to be used. He takes the majority of the damage from that Mystic Flare and then gets promptly healed up thereafter. And he'll just casually zap, zap, <laughs> He himself zap. pushing. It's, it's the Zeus. Zeus yeah, is the one hitting zap, the Rex here. Zap, zap. Walks out from the <laughs> silence. Oh, which is out his first ultimate. Still has a second. They're going to get the Lotus Orb. And it's Manta kinda, Illusions and Zeus right now. Slow sieging Zeus. You don't see that every day, folks. He can't even really do big damage to this. He's like, eh. <laughs> that uh, Zeus animation, probably to me, the worst animation in the game. He's forcing them to use mana at this point. Okay, Moo's like, let's go! Sees Yawar, tries to make a big jump in for him, but the Grave's gonna be there. Now they decide to double back. Meanwhile, TC's gonna get lifted. Now they're putting their focus back onto the Rax with more. Very low, and a quick destruction right there of Yawar is gonna force him into a buyback. Now that means the Rax to crumble ruptured. here. JL, jump in. He's ruptured. They follow it up. Big Echo Slam. Bulba gonna get saved with the Grave. Barely alive and well, but that means TC will be going down. Bulba will be dropped shortly thereafter. JL gets the Lotus Sword, but not gonna be reflecting the Laguna. He's almost alive. He's gonna walk away here, and it's gonna be a JO disconnection, but right at the moment, that DC have thrown in the towel. Awkward finish there, but nonetheless, <laughs> it's still done. DC, Ooh. go down and fire. We'll take game number one of this lower bracket final. Yeah. Definitely, most people would consider an upset coming in. Fire just mm -hmm. seems to be riding the momentum train after their victory earlier today. They've been in the lower bracket from round one and yet to drop a game in the lower bracket. This has just been impressive game after game for them. They've found, it, as much as you wouldn't expect it, J.O.'s drafting has been a key part for this team. It's, uh, you'd expect Fluff, like the kind of captain drafter that he's known to be in that role, but J.O. has put together some great drafts and it just seems to be that kind of just new breath of fresh air that Fire have kind of found themselves rejuvenated with. Yeah, and it's funny you say that. They're run from the lower bracket. If they were to take this whole thing, make it to the end, and we're trying to find out which of these teams is going to be the next EG, well, they better do in the EG way. Get to that lower bracket <laughs> yeah. and battle all the way to the end. We'll have to see, though, if that's going to be the case or not. Will it be Fire or will it be DC who match up with Cloud9 in the grand final? We're going to have our answer by the end of today, but that was only game number one. So let's get ready for some game two action, folks. We'll be right back. I'm Coddle Guy. That's Gods for Beyond the Summit. We'll see you soon for more Dota.